Trinity Episcopal Church on this seventh Sunday after Epiphany. We invite you to bring your own prayers and concerns to join with ours as we are challenged today by Christ's call to live as reflections of God's image and likeness of mercy and goodness in our daily lives, just as Jesus does himself. The opening hymn is found in the Lord.
Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? For his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, and Lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry, and go up to my father, and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and ye shall be near me. You and your children, and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together parts of Psalm 37, found on page 5 of your book. Do not fret yourself because of the evils. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong, for they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and in the good. Well, the man and the on his churches. Take a while of the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as our life, and your trust healing as a new day. Be still before the Lord.
perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that, listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who care for curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? If you love those who love you, or even sinners love those who love them, if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Forgive, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. God of compassion, you have reconciled us in Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Enable us to live as Jesus lived, breaking down walls of hostility and healing enmity. Give us grace to make peace with those from whom we are divided, that forgiven and forgiven, we may be everyone in Christ 
who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever, one holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The only life that will endure is one that's kind and good and true, and so for God I'll take my stand. Each day I'll lend a helping hand. Life's evening sun is seen. Marginalized, 
truly powerless and weak, to those who had been brutally conquered and oppressed by a hostile and cruel foreign force. Today, we hear those words from a very different perspective. The challenge we face then is to recognize and to acknowledge that something will have to change if the beloved community of which we speak, for which we long, ever becomes more than just something for which we hope. It is impossible to change anyone else. The only person I will ever be able, uh, capable of changing is me. If I want beloved community to be a possibility, I have to change. I have to grow. I have to think and act in ways that are different than those that I have thought and acted until now. Those are hard words to say. Those are hard words to hear. It is easy to think of ways in which others have hurt me. It is very difficult to acknowledge ways in which I have acted to hurt others. The good news is that I'm not unique. What is true of me is true of most of us. To some degree, we are all broken, wounded, hurting, and ill. There are times we think before we act. There are times when we allow anger, fear, hurt, and disappointment to prevent us from making good and wise decisions. There are times when we are self-centered and fail to consider the needs, wants, and desires of others. When this is pointed out to us by others or by our own prayerful self-reflection reflection, and examination, this can be very hard to hear and to accept. But if we are to move forward, that must be the beginning. Those words which we say so often when we gather as a community pierce us to the heart. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. The hard truth here that I am forced to acknowledge and to confess is that rather than acting out of love, there were times that I have acted as an enemy rather than as a friend. In our beloved church, our beloved Episcopal Church. This is a reality which we have been called to explore. In the past century, we have moved towards the inclusion, empowerment, and affirmation of women, our mothers, sisters, and daughters, of our black sisters and brothers, and of other persons of color and of our LGBT plus siblings. This has not been easy for us. In each case, we struggled to accept that we had been acting in ways that were exclusionary, hurtful, and sinful. Even after we ceased to intentionally exclude and marginalize, we continued to passively prevent true acceptance, inclusion, and empowerment. Thanks to the powerful and prophetic witness of women and men of faith, we made decisions to move forward towards truly forming loving community. We have made so much progress and growth, yet we must not allow ourselves to become complacent and self-congratulatory. We're not there yet. Much work remains undone. The simplest things are often the hardest. It is perhaps not so much that we are challenged to forgive as it is that we are challenged to accept forgiveness. 
Anyone who has ever taken the risk of becoming completely vulnerable and of uttering those life-changing words, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Knows the healing power of hearing the words, I forgive you. That forgiveness brings a new possibility. While the hurt we have done can never be undone or forgotten, it does not have to be the end. It can be the beginning of a new way of thinking, of acting, of being. And thus, it is as true of us as individuals as it is for our community. I chose to begin my words, my reflection with you today by sharing a well-known song from my Southern Baptist childhood, A Beautiful Life. It reminds me that each day offers a new opportunity to turn away from sin and to embrace the gospel. It challenges me not to let this day end without choosing to act in love. It echoes the words of our Savior Jesus Christ that if I choose to love, to do good, to bless, and to pray, I have the power to make a difference and to help to make all the communities in which I am present. Beloved community, places where God may be truly found. of our hearts, 
that God will free us from returning evil for evil and help us confront evil with love and mercy. God of life, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for all who have been our enemies, whether politically, economically, or personally, that we may let go of hurts and grudges and seek new paths of understanding. God of life, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the nations who seek to ease tensions and hostility in Eastern Europe, that they may come to a new understanding of mutual con concerns and open new pathways for peace and justice to prevail. God of life, hear our prayer. <clears throat> for all who are suffering, that God will free them from fear, bring justice to those who are wrong, hope to those grieving and in despair, and healing to the sick. Remembering especially Joe, Kate, Amy, Sally, Patty, Rosina, Danette, Woody, Antonia, Bonnie, Yvonne, Tim, Kayla, Addison, Brother John, Donna, and those whom you may name. Amen. God of life, For those who have died, remember it especially George and Belle Watson and Carol Lee Benedetto and those whom you may name. That they may be raised in glory and inherit the place prepared for them. God of life, Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary the God-bearer, Matthias the Apostle, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord, our God. God of mercy and love, hear our prayers and grant that we may show your perfect love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. just wanted to take an, a moment and I can't say it enough and I just seeing everyone with us today the Euclid and 
and the Lord, and that thank you so much for your ministry to us and your sharing with us. As we're going in this transition time, it has been an absolute blessing. And thank you. And I will celebrating our thank yous as well. Let us present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Hymn number 657 is found on your board.
Jesus said to your beloved Son, redeem us from sin and death, and make us heirs in him of everlasting life. And when he shall come again in tri power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God for the people of God. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ, the 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 bread of heaven. Body of Christ, Body of Christ.
God of glory, you nourish us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us your light may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon those whom you love and those whom you would pray for this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.